So I've had this Infinity Blackfish dugout race for for about a month now, and I've been testing out in a variety of conditions. So I simply want to take today to share with you guys some of my initial things that I love about this board and some things that I don't necessarily love that much about this board. So before I sweat myself to death out here because it's so stinking hot, let's get this video started. Whew, no joke guys, it is so hot out here today. The water looks incredible with there being no wind, but with there being no wind, there's no refreshing breezy that keep me cool. So whew, I'm suffering today for you guys. Just know that. <laughs> So let's start off this video talking about some pros or some things that I enjoy about this paddle board. And the first biggest pro about this board is that it is fast. Like no joke, it is quick. And just to show you guys how quick, at the end of this video, I'm gonna do a speed test on the water to show you just how fast it is or how fast I can personally paddle this paddle board. So stay tuned for that speed test at the end of this video. Now moving on to the second thing that I love about this paddle board is how stable it is. Now, in comparison to my inflatable race board that I was using before this board, this board is actually three inches more narrow than that previous board. But with that being said, with the way this board is designed, I ironically feel more stable on this more narrow board versus my wider race inflatable board. This has to do for a variety of factors. The first one has to be with the wider nose it has at the front of this board helps provide a little bit extra stability when paddling along. Now, even though, yes, it is still narrow, so you can't push through chop, it still has a little bit of width to it and some great volume to help you stay more stable in this paddleboard as well. So the next feature that helps this paddleboard feel way more stable is this dugout design. By having this feature in design, you're able to stand lower to the water surface, which helps your center of gravity, gravity be lower to the water as well. So for me, being a taller paddler at six foot four inches tall, being on my inflatable paddleboard, I'm actually standing higher up on the water, which causes my center of gravity to be higher up as well, which causes me to be a little less unstable. Versus this dugout version where I'm actually standing lower to the water surface, bringing my center of gravity lower to the water, help me to have better stability while standing on this paddle board. So that's a great feature about this dugout design is it helps your center of gravity to be lower to the water. With it as well, since you are standing technically inside this paddle board, you have some nice tall rails on either side of your feet as well. This helps provide you with an extra point of reference for more stability, especially in side chop. So as your paddle board kind of moves to the chop side to side, you can kind of use your feet to brace against these side rails to provide you another point of reference to give you more stability as well while paddling on the water. And then the last feature about this paddle board that helps provide it with more stability is the concave design on the bottom of this paddle board. So by having this concave design with a dugout version on top and then having a little bit wider nose to the front, even though yes, it is still narrow, all three of these things help provide you with more stability while paddling on the water, which is a big pro of wireless paddle boards so much. So the next feature that I do love about this paddle board and does a great job at is how well it glides as well as how well it skips through the water as you're paddling in upwind or downwind conditions. When it comes to the glide side of things, I found that through my longer paddle strokes, as I'm doing longer distance paddles, this board does a great job at skipping my glide and speed up in between each of my paddle strokes. This allows me to save energy as I'm recovering from my paddle stroke, setting up for my next one while still maintaining good speed. And then when it comes to the way this board kind of skips to the water as you're paddling in upwind conditions, it does a great job of that as well. Now, just like any kind of paddle board you're paddling, whether it's an all around paddle board, a touring board or a race board like this one, when it comes to paddling in upwind or downwind conditions, you will have to adjust your feet on the paddle board. So once I've learned to kind of adjust my feet in the right position on this paddle board to put that nose in the right position and the right height of the chop, this board has done a great job about pushing through the chop and skipping across the top of it as I paddle in upwind conditions. Now, with that being said, if you are standing too far forward on this paddle board, that nose will tend to dive more into that chop and kind of pushing at your board as you're paddling upwind, which will make it more difficult. That's why it's very important to make sure you stand just a little bit further back on the paddle board, depending on how big the chop is for the day, to make sure your nose is really piercing the top part of that wave or that chop and skipping across the top of it as well. So just like many other hard race boards out there on the market, another feature I love about this hard race board is all the different options and configurations you have to set up where you want your race handles to be on this paddle board. So the first handle we also had on this paddle board is a center handle, which is great for carrying your paddle board to and from the beach as you're coming from your vehicle to the water. And then on the side rails, you also can set wherever you want your side handles to be on this paddle board. Whether you want them towards the middle part of your paddle board, towards the front middle, or towards the very front, 
There's a variety of different configurations you can set up your race handles to be to help you be better suited for your style of racing with this paddle board. So this is incredibly nice and also very important to have for those beach start races as you have the perfect configurations to hold your paddle board to easily run into the water and start your paddle board race. Now right now I only have one side race handle as when I was in California at the Infinity Shop, I just completely forgot to get the secondary race handle while I was there. I think I was just too excited about this paddle board and just completely forgot about it. So I have ordered a secondary race handle to set up on this side of my paddle board to set up a good configuration for myself to use for those beach starts also. And then lastly, the biggest thing that I love about this paddle board and kind of just its overall design and features is how it really is a paddle board that can handle any type of condition you throw at it. Now, Infinity does say that this Blackfish race board is their all around king race board. And after testing it out for a few weeks now on the water in a variety of conditions, I would have to say I agree with that statement. This board does a great job paddling in flat water conditions, having great speed to it, as well as bringing into any kind of chop or upwind or downwind conditions. This board does a great job paddling the variety of things that happen on the water as you're paddling along on it as well. So overall, as the biggest pro for this paddle board, and it really is the all around king and can get you through whatever you put it through on the water. Whew, all right, let me get a water break. Whew. Oh, that's nice. Woo. It's only 90 a.m. right now, but it's probably already, already like 90 degrees out here. It's gonna be a hot day, that's for sure. All right, now that I'm rehydrated, let's talk about some things that I find just a little bit inconvenient about this paddle board. So the first con or thing I find just a little bit inconvenient about using this style of hard race board is that it is a little bit more fragile. Now, yes, it is fully made out of carbon fiber, so it is incredibly rigid and durable, but when it comes to hard surfaces, such as rocks, concrete, other things such as that, you do have to be careful about hitting it against those hard surfaces as it can damage this board very easily. Now, this doesn't just apply to this board only, it does apply to all hardboard race boards out there on the market. So when you do purchase a hardboard race board, you do have to be a little bit cautious about where you set it down at when it comes to those hard surfaces. Now, I'm simply saying this in comparison to my inflatable race board, because with that race board, it is very durable and I can simply drop it or even throw it on hard surfaces. It's not gonna damage the board at all. But because this board is a hard board and is made out of carbon fiber, I do have to be a little more cautious about where I carry this board at and set it down on because I don't wanna damage it against those hard surfaces. So not necessarily like a huge con or huge inconvenience, but something that I do have to be more cautious of, I found of when I use this paddle board in comparison to my inflatable race board. So overall, I said, not a huge inconvenience, but something to be cautious of. Now this next feature I'm gonna talk about, it's not necessarily a con once again, but with the way this board is designed, you do have to kind of adjust your style of riding when it comes to this thing I'm about to talk about as well. And this has to go back to again, once again, to the nose of this paddle board. Now, yes, it is still a very narrow pointed nose, but it still has some kind of width to it as well. So on the front part of this paddle board, you'll kind of look on the bottom of it, it's still kind of a flat surface to it, which kind of helps it skip on that water as you're paddling through chop. So versus piercing through waves as you're paddling through chop, this board tends to like to skip through chop as you're paddling forward. So once again, it's not necessarily like a massive con, but if you're used to riding a race board that has a more pointed narrow nose design to it, you will have to adjust your paddling a little bit when it comes to riding this board, allowing you to kind of meet that chop at the right position with the nose of your paddle board, allowing you to skip to the water as you paddle forward through chop. So as I say over and over again, it's not really a con about this paddle board. It's simply the way it's designed and made to handle the chop when it comes to paddling in upwind conditions. Now my next con about this paddle board comes to the foot pad itself. Now in the center piece here in the kind of the middle of the paddle board, you see there's kind of like a square design on the foot pad, which kind of gives you some more cushion for your feet to stand on it. But at the same time, I found when I stand on this, on this style of foot pad design with these squ large squares, my feet become just a little bit uncomfortable over time standing on the square design. On my previous paddle board, it had more of like a, um, what do you call it? Like a diamond shape design on the foot pad. And I feel like with that design, my feet uh, were able to feel more comfortable standing on the, that diamond design for a longer period of time versus standing on this more square design on the foot pad. So with that being said, that's obviously my personal preference, but something I do prefer to when it comes to my foot pad on my paddle board. 
So my last comment for this paddleboard actually has to do with the paint job or design of this paddleboard. Now, yes, overall, I love the overall look and design of this paddleboard. When it comes to the color choice that I chose for this paddleboard, let's just say it wasn't necessarily the best decision for the hot summer suns here in Baja. For example, like today when the sun is just beating down on me in this paddleboard, all these parts that have the black design on the paddleboard, like these stripes, even the foot pad, can get very hot in this hot summer sun. Like right now, woo, I bet you if I poured some cold water on that paddleboard right now, you might see some steam come off it. <laughs> Not really, but it just goes to show you that this black design, if you do live in a hotter climate like myself here in Baja, where temperatures are pushing like 100 degrees every day in the summertime, these black parts will get very hot, so you do have to be cautious about making sure you get this board in the shade as soon as possible to help it stay at a nice cool temperature. Now, that being said, it does have a two-way valve here in the front part of the paddle board, so it will help your paddle board kind of adjust so it's change the temperatures. But at the same time, you keep this paddle board in the hot sun for too long, you do run the risk of damaging this paddle board in that hot summer sun. So with that being said, I'm gonna try to wrap this video up so that I can get this paddle board out of the hot summer sun so I can take care of it as well. Now, with all that being said, after my first month of using this paddle board and all the pros and cons, Overall, I still absolutely love this paddle board. I'm still very happy with my purchase of it. I'm stoked to use this paddle board in all my upcoming races, which my next race is actually gonna be in Long Beach, California in November for their first ever USA National Championships. So if you're in the USA and you're looking to do another race, I encourage you guys to come out for that race to meet up with me and have a fun time racing against each other. And then lastly, before we do the speed test for this paddle board to see just how fast it is, which I'm probably gonna do tomorrow morning when it's nice and cool out again, and I'm refreshed after standing in this hot sun today. But lastly, I will be doing another video coming up very soon where I do a comparison with hard race boards like this one against inflatable race boards like my All-Star inflatable race board. So I talk about some pros and cons when it comes to inflatable race boards versus hard carbon fiber race boards like this one. So if you're interested in seeing that video and learning more about those pros and cons, make sure you subscribe and keep an eye out for that video dropping here in the next few weeks. But with all that being said, I'll see you tomorrow morning for our speed test. Good morning, guys. It's the next day now. I just finished doing an hour, just zone two easy paddle. And it's a little breezy today and a little bit of current. So I'm gonna try to come over here closer to shore outside of both to get a more accurate speed test and just see what this board can do. So let's get after it. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to do just a nice gradual build up to my top speed. I think that'll give me the best chance to see what I can do on this board. Right, just into my paddle session now. I'm gonna check both the Strava app and also the paddle logger app to see how they compare in terms of what they say my top speed was today. So first one up here, I'm gonna pull up my Strava one from the day. It says my logger speed. Okay, let's pull up the stats here. It says my max speed today was 12.8 kilometers an hour. Not too bad. All right now compared to paddle logger app from the day which the paddle logger also says 12.67 kilometers an hour so yeah I say it's about 12.6 to 12.8 kilometers an hour not too bad pretty fast board <laughs> now I'll say as you some of the conditions too I got some breeze blowing this way and then kind of going the other direction but right here just sitting down on the paddle board Seems like the wind is stronger than the current day as I'm being pushed with the wind. I paddled against the wind for those tests, so. Give or take a little bit off of that time, but overall, pretty fast forward. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one.